This is a special presentation of Farm Journal Television. Welcome to Corn College, I'm Clinton Griffiths. Here's what's coming up on the show. Today, we're digging in and making plans for higher yields. Ken Ferry walks us through seedbed preparation. Plus, how to know when that perfect soil is ready to plant. Too wet, too dry, or just right. And we'll pick apart the planter. Today, we're focused on setting row cleaners and making sure the gauge wheel helps guide the planter to higher yields. Thanks for joining me on Corn College TV. You know, you can have all the fancy equipment you want, but if your planting season doesn't start from the ground up with that perfect seed bed, well then hitting your yield goals at the end of the year is gonna be pretty tough. Today, for the systems approach, we head back out into the field prior to planting for a look at what it takes to start that crop in a winning foundation. Again, when we talk about the systems approach, we talk a lot about seed bed preparation, tillage, making sure that you have the perfect ideal situation for those seeds to go into. Uh, walk us through what you see here and what makes a great spot. This, this seed bed's definitely ready to rock and roll. Um, it's had, in this case, we're, we're dealing with fall tillage, so this is in a, in a, uh, a vertical till format. He's went in here and he's, he's completely shattered the soil horizon. So the soil has been shattered uh, within four to six inches of the surface all the way across. And then his leveling pass in here has been vertically uh, done with a vertical type harrow where he's, he's fitted this thing back down. So basically what I'm saying is he's knocked the peaks and the valleys in and leveled this thing up. Uh, with, a, with that type of format, it does bring a lot of residue back to the surface, as you can sure. see here, which gives us some protection to the surface compared to having it completely gone. But it's also, when it's back here at the surface, it's easier to manage, meaning we can push it out of the way to get a seedbed that we want. Right. Now, the grower's job here is to take advantage of this seedbed, and as we look at this particular seedbed, in really good shape. I can go through here with my finger. There's no serious layers under here. All this soil fractures away pretty nice for this farm. And here's my seed bed or my seed environment right in here. And uh, oh, it just crumbles right just up. Just crumbles right up. And I got plenty of moisture coming up because there's no horizontal layers here. Plenty of moisture is coming up from the surface. And he's got a nice soil environment right down here below it. So all we have to do is, is to tuck the seed into this moisture, get a good closure, and it'll be easy to close on this because it's in really good shape today. Uh, keep the seed bed level, tuck into this moisture. Can't get any sweeter than that. Soil temperatures are up. These uh, corn's going to come out of the ground really, really nice in this environment. So we're not fighting a lot of... Uh, um, changes in the soil environment. Right. So if, if we come out here and we have to fill in six inch peaks and valleys just ahead of the planter, we're going to end up with dry soil, moist soil, and that can create an uneven right. germination issue. And it may be a little rougher for the planter to run, I would imagine, also. It can be rougher than planter. This, this field here is in pretty good shape. The, probably the bigger complaint you would hear is this kind of the tractor and stuff is going to be kind of a little bit squishy underneath uh, and kind of floating along and pull probably a little bit harder. If we did a poor job of preparing the fall tillage and we left peaks and valleys in here that weren't tilled or untilled columns, then you'd hear the complaint that the guy's getting tossed around in the tractor planting and he's getting tossed around uh, in the sprayer trying to spray it because there'd be columns of soil in here that get too close to the surface that haven't been tilled. And you want uniformity uh, and that's what you're looking for, especially when you're implementing something like vertical tillage. You don't want to have corn that's growing fast and slow and that type of thing. And, uh, and this kind of environment, uh, it's, you know, we've still got to keep our, our down pressure uh, in a moderate range so we don't smear any sidewalls, but this is going to be easy to plant. Easy to plant. All right, well, hopefully we'll get it done and have a good stand here yep. pretty soon. When we come back, Ken continues his look at prepping the perfect seed bed. And later we get to work. Missy Bauer looks at the right way to run row cleaners and the problems associated with a loose gauge wheel. All that and we ask if adding additives to starter fertilizer is worth the expense. Corn College TV is brought to you in part by Micro Essentials, the next generation of fertilizer for the next generation of farming.
over the generations, Fertilizer, the unsung hero of the farm, has been in the background, quietly nourishing crops with very little fanfare. Until now. Meet the next generation of fertilizer. Micro Essentials. Whoa, I'm gonna need a bigger combine. Looking for giant yields? Take a look at AgriGold Giants. Exceptional genetics combined with the agronomic expertise of our corn specialists add up to giant results for you. Genetics, agronomics, results. AgriGold, the corn specialist. See more at agrigold.com. Hello, folks. This is Mark Gold with Top Third Ag Marketing. If you need help marketing your grains or livestock, give us a call. We offer one on one relationships that can protect you without the threat of margin costs. We don't speculate, we manage risk. If you're tired of paying acreage and management fees for marketing advice that hasn't actually helped your bottom line, then give us a call. Call today to get two weeks of Mark's private grain marketing email. Top Third Ag Marketing, earning the trust of American farmers every day. Some people tend to dream small. Others dream big. But with agriculture's ability to feed the one billion hungry people on the planet, and a projected global population of 9 billion by the year 2050, it's time to dream huge. Farmers Feeding the World is about agriculture coming together to increase both hunger solutions and food production. Learn more. Give generously. Please dream huge with us. While this is going to be really easy to plant, we're going to do a good job. Parts of this field it's, it's really not fit to plant today, but we got to plant them because we're, we're under the gun, we're under the calendar. And we'll go take a look at some of those spots okay. and see how much tougher it's going to be. Great. So, Ken, you say this area is a little tougher to plant. Yeah, this pocket or this actual soil type change in here has got more clay in it, holding more water. And, uh, you know, all it needs is time. Unfortunately, in this situation, we don't have it. It's already June 3rd, and, and we have to figure out how to get this planted. And it's and pretty wet underneath. Here. It's got a lot of moisture in here, yeah. And, and this is kind of where um, vertical tillage really shines in this situation. He's done his fall tillage, and he's ready. We just have to get this field leveled up to plant. And when we're leveling from the top as we would a vertical tillage, it keeps us from going underneath and bringing up that wet soil. So if we get down in there, if I were to run a field cultivator or a soil finish in here today, try to get this ready to plant, I could get it dried out, but I would have to do with a lot of clods as I brought that wet soil back to the surface okay. in here. So if I can just buff it off and let Mother Nature and the sunlight do its own thing, we can get this thing dried out. Now the trick to planting this is, is this is while it's somewhat ideal on top and I got a nice seed bed here to work with, just like um, our other site, is there's quite a bit of moisture down below. So if I, if I look below here, I realize that now it's not, uh, it's not an environment that you want to plant into because of the moisture level. Oh yeah, look at that, it's really wet. So this is, I can actually ribbon this. You say, well, this, this just isn't ready to plant. It needs maybe another two or three days when we can ribbon it. But the reality is here, this field is ready to plant if we just kind of teach the planter to dance, meaning that, uh, yeah, if I had time, I'd give it more time, but <laughs> June 3rd, we don't have time. We so have a situation time, sure. where we realize that we do have a planting environment here at the surface uh, and we're getting this grade off so it won't stick to the planter. The trick will be is to leave this soil in place and tuck the seed into this moisture down here. Unfortunately, what we run into in a lot of cases where a grower isn't paying enough attention, he will move this soil out of the way with his row cleaner. So right. this will get so beef. That's right. Yeah. So then he ends up trying to plant in that environment there, and that's just too wet, uh, too wet to plant into. Right. And a lot of times I get to the field and the farmer's frustrated that he just, he just can't get the planting job he wants, and he thinks about maybe going out here and working it a couple more times to dry it out. But the reality is, all we need is that top half inch in pretty good shape in this situation. We can put the we can put the seed into this environment down here uh, and we'll be all right. But we can't move all of our dry soil away and then have to deal with this on the right. planter 
right. know. So they need to dial it back and just try to stay on that surface. Right. And in, in corn on corn, we like to stay a little aggressive with the row cleaner, get the residue out of the way best we can, but you can't do that at the cost of putting yourself into an environment that won't plant. Um, you know, the obvious option would be let's just wait uh, right. a day or two if you had it. But when you're trying to make it happen, and a lot of times 80% of the field is fit to plant and 20% isn't. Right. And if you let that 20% dictate what's going to happen in that field, you could give up a lot of yield. So you learn how to plant that 20% by what we call teaching the planter to dance. You stay as light as you can on the planter, as light as you can on the down pressure. Stay aggressive with your closing, but make sure you don't move this good surface to plant into out of the way and force yourself into the wet stuff down below. Up next, Missy Bauer takes the reins with a little planter preparation, know your row cleaners and how to use them for maximum efficiency. Plus, are starter fertilizer additives a good idea? We've got answers. And gauging the gauge wheel, is it too loose or too tight? Tips from the planter when Corn College TV returns. It's not too early to think fall. So protect your phosphorus fertilizer application with Avail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. Research shows that fall applied phosphate protected by Avail increases corn yields by eight bushels per acre. That's why it pays to add Avail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. So save yourself time and money next spring. Talk to your fertilizer dealer today for more information or visit chooseavail.com. I've traveled around the world a lot. I've witnessed uh, what we're trying to address here, and that's hunger. There's six billion people on the face of the planet today, and they say there's over a billion of them that have poor nutrition. They go to bed hungry. And I come back home and I witness the incredible productivity that takes place in American agriculture across our country. Somehow we need to do a better job of getting the food to those people that are in need. I guess when I look at farmers feeding the world, I say to myself, what do we really hope to accomplish? I hope we accomplish a design of a system that has a legacy that goes on for multiple generations. And I think with the knowledge that is possessed within agriculture, the funding that is in, within agriculture, we can get this accomplished. Farmers Feeding the World is about agriculture coming together to increase both hunger solutions and food production. Learn more. Give generously. Dream huge. Hi, I'm Mike Flores of Flores Trading, and in my 35 years of investing, I'm convinced that market prices can be more likely predicted using technical analysis. My firm specializes in this. We can help you to deploy technical analysis in your marketing and trading decisions. At Flores Trading, you will receive free life quotes 24 hours a day, and you can trade right on your own computer. You can open an account online in five minutes with no paperwork. To get started, call the number below. Whether you're farming corn on corn, no-till, or strip-till, good seed to soil contact comes from getting that old crop residue out of the way. And that means running the right row cleaners at the right depth. Missy Bauer has today's Farmer's Toolbox. Missy, there's a lot of different attachments that you can put on a planter. Uh, one uh, most important being row cleaners. Uh, and, and you say how those are set in the front can really affect what happens behind. Right, what we're after, if we're going to be running row cleaners like we are in this planter, first of all, you know, what do we look for in a row cleaner? What we really like to see is what we'd call a floating row cleaner, meaning that we've got a row cleaner that's going to kind of roll with the contour of our ground a little bit. It's not sitting there in a fixed position. Okay. So a lot of times if we get a row cleaner that's in a fixed position, we'll find that they'll want to plow a lot, like how we have this one right. set here, where it's really, in times it's plowing stuff out of the way too much, and other times then it's not moving or rolling enough. Right. Where if we get a real good floating row cleaner, it seems to move along and keep more consistently cleaning of an area. Okay, and there are there different types of cleaners? 
There would be a lot of different types as far as being fixed or floating. The other thing we like to see on a floating row cleaner that we've shown on this planter is we've got some depth band wheels on there, and that just helps them float a little bit better. Okay. So the other important thing is, you know, once I've got the row cleaner, I've picked out what's best for me in my situation is making sure it's set right here in the field. Okay, and you can see here that these are all three different settings. Correct. What we see here is this, this row cleaner, the row in front of you, is set too aggressive. And what we talk about, what are we looking for when it's too aggressive is we're really moving a lot of soil out of the way. Uh, yeah, we have mounds here on That's each side. That's correct. And when we get this too much of a mound in here, we've almost created a valley through here. When this is a valley, imagine after we plant and it rains, where's that water going to want to run? It's all going to sit right here. So we're going to bring a lot of water right into our seed zone. If we get pounding rains, that could be a bad thing. Okay. So that's one reason we don't want to have it too aggressive. Another reason is if we're out in conditions like it's been this year, the spring of 2011, very marginal conditions as far as it's been very wet, a lot of times if we get these too aggressive, we might have some decent dry soil on the surface here where we could be planting into, but what these row cleaners are doing is moving too much of it out of the way, and I actually am ending up planting into moist soil. The soil's so, too wet, okay. That's right, so I've taken too much of that dry soil that I would have had nice planting conditions, I've moved it out of the way, and now I'm planting down here in these wet conditions. Right. So we can change the aspect of that seed zone by having that run too aggressive. Okay, now what if we're set too shallow? I mean, this would be the other thing. We don't want to go to the opposite extreme, right? right? So if we get too shallow, what we find is that this row cleaner is not turning enough and we end up with this residue uh, that's still in, in this row. And what the downfall is, is when we really have it pinched in here like this, it's going to start to affect things like our seeding depth. If we've still got residue pinched down in there, that'll also wick moisture away from the seed as we're trying to germinate that seed. If we've got this residue that's pinched in there and exposed to the air, okay. it'll pull that moisture away. Okay. So what we'd really like to see is more of an ideal setting where we're moving some of this out of the way, moving any clods that are here that are in our way out. We're getting some of this residue moved out of the way, but not moving mounds and mounds of soil here. You can see that we have a lot of residue we've wiped out of the way. We've got some clods that we've wiped out of the way sure. without creating this huge valley like we did over there. So it is important to get your row cleaner set properly. This is going to be something you're going to want to pay attention in a field-by-field -field type of situation. You okay. may have to make some adjustments. Okay, and is this something you start by watching? I mean, you've got to watch it run a little bit. Is that right? Correct. If we get in that planter and we run a little bit across the field, um, one thing we want to do is just watch the row cleaners. How often are they actually turning is one thing that we're looking for. If they're just sitting there and they're plowing all the time, they're probably going to be too aggressive. Okay. If you're watching back there and you see that it's hardly ever turning, we probably have the situation that's going on here. Okay. So in this case, we're in conventional tillage running row cleaners because they're still important to move clods out of the way, move small stones out of the way, as well as any trash that I am dealing with. So we want to see that they're rolling but just not d doing either of the extremes. Okay. Each week we take questions from our viewers for a segment we call Ask an Agronomist. All right, Ken, today our viewers want to know about starter fertilizer. With so many starter additives on the market today, how can I know which ones are worth the expense? It's a good question. There's just a ton of different additives we can stick in the starter on the market today and I get a lot of questions in our office about, you know, should I put it in, is it worth the money, that type of thing. And it you know, there's some additives that are that are really showing their, their weight out here and being able to perform and one of them we know in our starter plots, for instance, is zinc, a good zinc source in there. But there is a lot of them on the market and my response to growers would be you know, before you go hog wild on some of these newer additives that don't have a lot of history, put them in your own field trials. Uh, put them out there and make them, make them perform, make them uh, give you numbers as far as what they're actually going to do. And as we look in this particular plot here, um, this whole plot is set up with different starter additives. So we did different mixes uh, and uh, put them out here in a replicated trial. We'll take this to harvest and we'll be able to relay that information back to our grower, you know, as far as his questions about which one of these performed the best uh, or even performed at all, depending on the situation that you're into. But um, there's just so many different types out there now today that uh, it, it really, you need to do your homework, I think, before you spend a lot of money on them to make sure they're going to do uh, everything that they're said they're going to do. Thanks, Ken, and thank you for your questions. Up next, we're back at the planter for a lesson in gauging the right adjustments for gauge wheels.
Green College TV is brought to you in part by SFP, putting revolutionary technology to work in the field and helping producers get more from their crops and their fertilizer dollar. Over the generations, Fertilizer, the unsung hero of the farm, has been in the background, quietly nourishing crops with very little fanfare. Until now. Meet the next generation of fertilizer. Micro Essentials. Farmers Feeding the World is about agriculture coming together to increase both hunger solutions and food production. It's right there, between can and do. Learn more, give generously, dream huge. Rust is destroying your valuable equipment and property. Rust Guy permanently stops rust the easy way. No scraping, grinding, or sandblasting. Brush, spray, or roll Rust Guy onto any rusted metal and it will not rust again. Rust Guy is not a paint, but an industrial strength formula that kills rust on contact. It leaves a smooth finish that can be left as is or painted. Rust Guy protects from salt, manure, fertilizer, urine, and rain. Call 888 Rust Guy to talk to a rust expert or go to rustguy.com. I'm Greg Vincent, the editor of AgWeb, and welcome to our new site. This marks the end of many long months by a lot of us here at Farm Journal Media and also even some of our loyal readers who were dedicated to helping us remain the homepage of agriculture. This new site is designed to have more vibrant content, easier navigation, and faster load times while still delivering the same quality information that you've come to expect from AgWeb over the past 10 years. So go ahead and take a look around the site and let us know what you think. AgWeb, the homepage of agriculture. Missy, there's a lot of equipment on these planters and it's always important to make sure all of them are set correctly. But today let's talk about the gauge wheel and how important it is to the process. This gauge wheel, one of the important things we want to make sure, and this is something we can really do you know, in the shop before we ever get to the field, is these gauge wheels need to be set correct. When we say set correct, what I'm after is having this gauge wheel have what we'd call true contact with this disc opener. So you can see this gauge wheel right here. There's an actual gap between the inside of the gauge wheel and this disc opener. I can okay, actually get, get my finger in there. And if I grab a hold of this gauge wheel, I can actually really move it back and forth. Sure. So there's a lot of play in there right now. Okay, and, that, and you want it tight up against? That's correct. What I'd like to see is that we've got real good contact between this disc opener and this gauge wheel to the point when we actually let go of it, it'll actually kind of rub down there and you'll hear it kind of rub down. Almost to the point you think, boy, are these maybe too tight. Because on this design of this planter, a deer or a Kinsey planter, as it's running through the field, this wheel is going to want to pull out on us. So that's its tendency or nature of what it's going to want to do. Now if it's a Case IH planter, it's set up a little bit differently and it'll actually pull itself in. Okay, so it's a bigger problem, you know, with it with a deer or a Kinsey because it's going to want to pull out on us. So this is just something we're going to make an adjustment here. This has an adjustable uh, cam, and then where we can tighten it down the rest of the way sure. to ensure that this is up there properly and tight. Okay, well let's talk about if it's too loose, what are we going to see? My concern when it's loose, like it is here is that as we're planting along, you think, well, it's not really necessarily dry, dry conditions out, but we can end up with dry soil in the seed trench. So what happens is we have dry soil here on the surface. Right. As this wheel is spinning and going through, we're picking up dry soil here in between because of the oh, gap. Sure. As this wheel spins around, it gets dropped out then on the inside here, which means that it's dropping down into the open seed trench back here. Okay, and then so, we've got different soil moisture in the same trench. Correct. So in, in essence, we end up with dry soil down in what used to be a very uniform moist seed trench. So if we get this dry soil mixed in with the moist soil, what we find is inconsistency when it goes to germinate. Okay. So this seed's got to take about a third of its weight in in water to start that germination process. If we don't have uniformity around what I call that little microzone, uh, we're not going to get that uniformity in, in that germination, which is going to lead to more uneven emergence, which is going to hurt our ear count. Okay, and then eventually hurt our yield and our profits at the end of the year. So, okay, so it all goes together. Make sure that this is tied up against uh, that uh, opening wheel. 
Right, if we can make sure this gauge wheel itself, when it's in the up and running position is how we want to check this in the shop, and that we get this tightened down enough, we let go of here that we've got good true contact there, we can almost hear it slide down. All right, perfect, thanks. Thanks, Missy, and thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today from our team of experts. Remember, if you missed anything, you can always find these shows online at farmjournalcorncollege.com. We're setting our sights on seeds. Missy breaks down the proper planting depth for setting that perfect stand. Plus, Ken checks out seed to soil contact with a look at the importance of managing the microenvironment around every kernel. And should you include phosphorus in starter fertilizers? Missy has tips from the field next week on Corn College TV. Thanks for watching. Now go and grow. Class dismissed.